Hi, Zainab. How are you? Thank you so, so, so much for joining me. And thank you to all of our supporters for joining us for this live conversation, Hope Beyond the Headlines, with Zainab Salvi, the founder of Women for Women International. Thank you, Laurie, for doing this and for having me and for your great work. <laughs> Zainab, um, we are living in such, such tough times. Um, but you are perhaps one of the most resilient women I've ever met. And I've been following your feed on um, your own Instagram account, and you've been sharing some of that. So I'd love to start by asking you to share a little bit about your own story. I first came across it reading uh, Between Two Worlds, your story of your early years, and then more recently, um, your more recent memoir. And so I know you've been through an incredible amount, and yet here you are smiling and giving support to others. Tell us, how do you do it? Well, first, Laurie, I really want to thank you first for your kindness. We each have our own superpowers, and I see yours as kindness uh, very much so. So thank you for that. Um, you know, I feel if there is dying in a while being alive, I have died several times, and I have been rebirthed uh, several times. I, from, you know, and there are many times in my moments of death, you know, um, to, to quote uh, a woman who run with wolves, you know, like the dying and rebirth card. Every time you feel like despair, whether it is how I came to America, whether it is when I was raped, whether it is working with women in wars and seeing horrible atrocities committing against them, and whether my own recent experience with my own death due to health issues, um, every time in that moment of despair, you feel like oh, everything is gone. I have come to believe that that moment, such moments are transformative moments. They help you reassess your life. They help you come up with the most important thing about life. They help recenter you. And it makes me, every time, I mean, like I don't just, I mean, like now, every time it makes me stronger, more optimistic, more grateful um, and that the things that I used to value before I don't value as much after this rebirth experience so I have seen it in myself I have seen it with other women I have worked with and dealt with over the course of my life so as we deal with this moment and there are moments in which I despair as well you know I trust I have come to trust life to trust that love is bigger than all to trust that in hope and i say if i could be here alive literally alive because a few months ago i thought i was dying mm -hmm. um and appreciating the simplest thing in life so can we all we will all witness that beauty and that transformation and how we handle this moment becomes a choice of whether we want to stick with the anxiety or whether we want to use it as a transformative moment in our lives. Mm. You know, you, you hear that kind of thing, everything from, you know, the women we serve and you see how um, the struggle is terrible, but it does make you stronger. I mean, even in our exercise classes, we hear that, right? It's, it's like you have to go through the pain to get the gain um, and it does make you stronger. One of the things I've been reflecting on and it's, it's is, um, a little bit true perhaps of organization as well. I mean, you founded this beautiful organization, Women for Women International. You led it for 20 years. And I've uh, been privileged to be part of it for four years. And I'm just, I'm just so impressed by how the staff, the communities, the cooperatives, the women, the leadership has been able to respond really well in this really scary moment. And I, I think that must have grown out of those first 20 years with you. And so I wondered if you had, I mean, you saw us through the 2008 financial crisis. There must've been so many ups and downs in the organization. Can you, what do you, you know, do, do you agree that Women for Women um, built resiliency through that time or, or can you, what do you think makes us like this or, or what are your reflections on that? Well, I think humans by definition are far more resilient then we give ourselves credit. Um, and, you know, you know, I mean, you know, Lori, I mean, I work, we all worked, right, in Iraq and Southern Sudan and Congo. I mean, these are, I mean, talk about dark moments. These countries face dark moments where they're seeing bodies of their loved ones in front of them. I mean, we're 
having a dark moment right now, but believe me, it's not the darkest that I've seen, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's darker in a global way, but we've seen, you know, and what I come to, like when I met over the course of my life, you know, women who have like been cut and mutilated and raped and pillaged and burned and all, and then they like, they come out with fiercely dancing and fiercely laughing and planting flowers in their gardens and putting lipstick on. And I came to realize, wow, human spirits are resilient. Women in particular, I believe, are very resilient and we are not giving credit for our resilience. It's been sort of skipped over, but we, I, so I, it makes me believe. And not only the women we serve, but honestly, how we dealt with so many crises across the, you know, over the years at Women for Women, whether 2008 um, financial crisis or so many others. Uh, what I came to learn is also the generosity of women it's so beautiful. And that's what I would distinguish women for women from other um, efforts or maybe other efforts are also feeling it is that we depend on the support of, you know, everyday women in every working sectors, in every income. And I am that resilience of generosity of I'm going to give you that $30 in my darkest moment and it's okay and we're going to keep hope alive. And we're, that, is, that keeps me going. You know, there was one time in Kosovo, one of the most memorable stories I have. I'm entering Kosovo right after the war in refugee camps. And there is a woman with her baby. I enter the tent and she tells me, please leave. I am too helpless to be helped. Too helpless to be helped. And that was one of the stories that just broke my heart to like, because that's the breaking of a spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Literally two months ago, I meet someone from Kosovo and his mother lost her baby in her hands, frozen, because it was so cold in the tent and the baby froze and died. And I'm, I'm meeting her son, you know, and he's telling me how his mother is doing. And this is now 20 years later. And she's doing well and he's doing well. And he's a professor at a major university here. And she's doing, and she's proud of him and all her sons and daughters are doing well. And, you know, I'm just like, wow. There is no need for us to be stuck in the sad moment. We have to also move forward and know life keeps, keeps going and there is hope and there is belief. We just have to keep our faith in that. Um, and so it's just so interesting for me that the despair and the hope, I believe in that. I really do. Yeah. And I think, you know, focusing on the fact that people do do those moments of beauty and joy doesn't in any way diminish or try to ignore the horrors they've been through but it's, it's how we keep going. And I think you're exactly right. It, women for Women, we as the staff have the privilege and the honor to know those women and know those stories and be inspired by those. And then the supporters, some of the sponsors we have, Zainab, they signed up with you 25 years ago. The volunteers who come into the office, who help us get the letters out, they've been coming into this office for 25 years. And so the dedication one of the supporters I talked to is a young woman, um, a, a supporter wrote to us and said, will you talk to my daughter because she wants to go into your kind of work? And so I said, of course. And so I was talking to her and she said, did you know that my mother was a single mother and sometimes we weren't sure we'd be able to be, um, get the grocery bill. And yet my mother always said, we have to keep up the sponsorship. Oh. And so when you have people like that um, supporting the organization, and then you have the women we serve who are showing us every day that no matter how tough it gets, you can keep going. So that's, that's uh, I feel so privileged to be um, not only um, in a place that I can be safe, but in an organization that has that strength. But I do want to ask you- You're making me cry, Laurie. You're making me cry. I feel like so, you know, so, touched you know but so grateful so grateful i mean it wasn't always easy to work in wars and hear uh -huh. some stories but as i hear your story and what you're sharing it i feel like it makes it all worth it it makes no, if i die today it would have been a full life and a grateful life and a content life because of what you just said uh, and because of all the women who joined this movement i'm so grateful and so Deeply touched and loving by all of it. <laughs> um, no, and Zainab, I think it's it's core to what you create in this organization. It's not it's not some kind of charity for some other somewhere else. This is all about our mutual journey, 
And the other one I just have to share with you because this is your legacy. And um, we got this message on the answering machine and it was a sort of wavering older voice of an older man. And watch out because this is gonna make me cry. And he said, I wanted to let you know that my wife died yesterday, oh. but I'm gonna take over her sponsorship. I wanted you to know that that I, that is so important to her, so it's important to me. And the fact that he called us the day later, and I just, so the meaningfulness of the connection is not, you know, it's such hope for the women in our program. I met a woman um, in Congo last month, and she said, you know, she had this horrific story, all kinds of horrors. Um, and when she got that first $10 stipend, she said it meant the whole world to her. And you could tell it was, the $10 was meaningful, but someone believed in her, right? So, so for you. her, it's transformative. For the gentleman and his wife, and for you know, so beautiful. It's, it's, I have it's, to say, there are like comments in here saying, "Strong ladies don't cry." I think you know what? I think in this moment of time, we need to express our emotions, and we need to show all the emotions. Strong women show all emotions show all of it because it's real and it's authentic and it's uh, i think emotions are beautiful to express these days you know we need more of them you know <laughs> no and I, I um and they're cleansing and and being able to bear the emotions you have to you have to you have to learn that skill don't you and you you talk yeah. about that in your book saying you've talked to me about it before if you bury them away they will make you weaker but if you let yourself feel them, even if that is so hard in the moment, you know, you come out on the other side knowing that you can bear it and you can handle it because you do. I mean, no matter what your circumstances, we have all been through really hard things. Um, so look, I would, you know, I did want to, um, and I know it's always hard to um, uh, pick a story, but I just wanted to also point people to the work you did and if you knew me, you would care the most incredible stories of so many women and how we've learned from them. I was gonna ask you to tell a story, but I actually see that our time is is gone. So we're <laughs> gonna have to stop here. So I do wanna- right here Before, just because, you know, just for a second, what I learned from all the women is ultimately hope and love is bigger than all. They all triumphed from their darkest experiences. And we, none of us wish such experiences to come to us directly. And they all triumph. If they can dance, so can we. So if can they we. can laugh, so can we. We are. It's time to plant the flowers and to show hope. And that starts in us and in reaching to each other in this moment of history. Yeah. And I think one of the things we've learned, right, is it's that connection that is part of what helps keep hope alive. That connection, being able to share your story with someone else, being able to share your pain, your joy. So um, this series is all about, and Women for Women has always been about keeping connections alive. I know we feel isolated in our homes, but Women for Women has been a way to connect across distance over thousands of miles and still feel that meaningful connection. And I, um, I thank you for having created an organization that allows us to- Oh, connect. and I thank you for leading it in such a beautiful way and for all the team and the staff in America and abroad and for all our supporters supporters and sponsors i am grateful i am grateful i'm grateful together i promise you this is i believe the 21st century is the feminine century mm -hmm. and i believe we've been doing this for for this moment for us for women to like stand up and show up in the world with all our feminine values like never before and that is exactly my final question to you zainab <laughs> it's a question we want to ask everybody on this series is what does hope for the future of women look like to you? You've started to answer that, but say a little bit more. Well, I mean, like, I think every woman needs to bring out her feminine power, whether it is kindness, what is generous, whatever it is, your feminine power, right? Like it's no longer a power means, uh, you know, just succeeding and thriving in the old ways. Now we need to bring our feminine values. That's why I'm so happy to share my tears so publicly. These are my powers is to feel everything so deeply. So if we bring out, because we need a new world, 
we need a reassessment of our world, you know, it's no longer the consumptions and the greed and all, we need the new values. And so I feel like if we each bring our own superpowers with our own new feminine values, I think we can reshape the world in a new way. It's so exciting for me. I mean, that's what keeps me going every day is we need every woman to own her feminine power, articulate it, live it, show how to live it, and we reshape the future together. Thank you, Zainab. That is really, really inspiring and definitely gives us hope. So thank you for being uh, with us on Hope Beyond the Headlines. Uh, those of you who'd like to join us next week, we'll be speaking to Emma Greed, who's one of our board members and the founder of Good American. And uh, thank you all for joining in. Wonderful. Thank you, Laurie. Keep up. Keep up, my friend. Thank you very much for your great work. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.